Oh. I didn't see you there. I'm sorry, I was just into my mix. I press play on my playlist and there's just a song that I cannot help but dance and move around. What about for you? Do you guys have a favorite song that you guys just cannot just sit back and let the song play? You have to get up, you have to dance, you have to move around. And maybe you move into furniture or maybe you hit someone by accident and you have to apologize and say sorry. You're just in the middle of the song because you press play. Well, we are talking about pressing play and how we can have confidence when it comes to our relationship with God. Remember, confidence is learning to see yourself the way that God sees you. So far, we've talked about how you are known by God, how you belong in God's family uh, because of Jesus. And today we're talking about forgiveness. Now, let me ask you this. How many, have you ever done something wrong where you've had to ask for forgiveness? Maybe you, you knew you were doing something wrong or what about something you had no idea that you did something wrong and you're like, I'm so sorry, I had no idea. Well, summer is a time for road trips, for travel. And in this next game, it is called Dumb Laws. Yes, you heard that game correctly, Dumb Laws. This is a game where it takes some of the most ridiculous, some of the stupidest, some of the dumbest laws that still exist in the states across America. You have to figure out either what the dumb law is or what state it is a part of. So remember, when you guys submit your games, go to the Hope Kids virtual room, look for game three for day three, submit your answers there, and we're going to announce winners later on tonight to see how many of you know the dumb laws that still exist. Because if you're traveling and you break one of these laws, there is a great chance you're going to sit back and go, I need forgiveness because I had no idea that this law even existed. So the 10, uh, 10 laws will come up on the screen, and I'll see you guys after the game is done. Those were some incredibly ridiculous laws, right? There's no way someone can know those now. But here's what, one thing I do know, something that's not ridiculous, is standing up, finding your space, and getting ready to worship how good our God is. So we're gonna throw it over to Jasmine and the worship team, and she's gonna lead us in the songs for today. Let's check it out.
Have you ever done something wrong that you needed to ask for forgiveness for? Probably a lot of times, right? You got in trouble by your teacher or by your parents that we've needed to ask for forgiveness or say, I'm sorry. But let me ask you guys this. How many of you guys have ever felt like you've done too many wrong things for God to forgive you or for God to love you? Have you felt that before? Well, as we're talking about confidence, we're talking about how we can have confidence knowing that God forgives us. Not just for one sin, not just for a hundred sins, a thousand, a million, all sins. And we're gonna learn in today's story that someone who treated others poorly, who was not liked, who was hated, was fa or found forgiveness through Jesus. So we're gonna check out the so-and-so show right now. We're gonna see who this guy is and I'll see you guys after the video is done. What are you doing, John? Oh, hey, hey, Brandon, I'm listening to some new theme song submissions. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, I thought we would need a new theme song. Oh, great. where are you getting these submissions from? Oh, everywhere. Here, here, here. Let's try a few. Oh, sure. All right, here we go. Um, and. So and so show. Yes, sir. So and so show. Yes, sir. So and so show, and we're ready to go. We got our hats. Yes, sir. We got our boots. Yes, sir. We're going country back to our roots. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stop singing it's the. Yes, sir. Mm. Eh. Right. All right. 
It's the So and So Show. And we're gonna go in three, two, one, hit it! Okay, how about this? The next one we choose is the one we'll go with. All right. All right. Let's do this. Deal. This is the theme to the So and So Show. That's right, the theme to the So and So Show. We're ready, don't you know? But first, here's our logo. This is the theme to the So and So Show. Yeah. Welcome to the So-and-So Show. I'm John, he's Brandon, and I hope you are ready for a humdinger of a show. Humdinger? Yeah, huh? because I have a surprise for you, buddy. Oh, it's not your collection of nose hairs, is it? No, no one touches my nose hair collection. No one would. <laughs> I signed us up for the annual Mega Movie Mania Trivia Contest. No, you, no, you oh, didn't. Oh, I did, I did. You see, Brandon here knows more movie facts than a movie database and is definitely more reliable. <laughs> well, not, not, not always. Yeah, but three years ago, Brandon talked me into entering the Mega Movie Mania Trivia Contest with him. He told me not to worry about it, that he had it covered, but we... We, we, we lost. Hey, that's actually putting it mildly. We didn't lose. We got destroyed, spanked, walla, put in a blender, and set to mince. We didn't even get a single question right. All right, that, thanks. Oh, see, look, even now, three years later, whenever someone brings it up, he can't even talk about it. He said he froze, but I know what really happened. Hey, Brandon, what are you doing? 73, don't bother me. I'm trying for the new record. <laughs> Aren't we supposed to be practicing for the Mega Movie Mania Trivia Contest? John, my boy, don't worry about it. I got it in the bag. No need to practice when you are the best. One. Okay. Two. Three. You knew? Yeah, that you got a big head and lost because you didn't practice. Yeah, I knew I was there, but I let it slide. Not anymore. It's been three years, Brandon. Three years. Yeah, but I... You gotta let it go. It's holding you back, Brandon. Your confidence is totally gone. You're like a, a big bowl of, of, of wet jello. I am. We lost because you were being overconfident, arrogant, presumptuous. I get it. But you know what? I forgive you. You do? I do. And it's time. It's time. It's way past time, buddy. I want to do it. Yeah, you do. Then there's only one thing left to do. All right. Ooh, I think we're ready. No, I think we need one more thing. Not more training. No, we need Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, what's going on? Hi, uh, uh, you know what? Brandon's lost his confidence. Is there a story that might help him out? Actually, I think I have just the one. Perfect. Take it away, Kellen. Today, we're using the old so-and-so flannel graph to help tell the story. It's about a guy named Zacchaeus. He lived in Jericho and was the chief tax collector, which meant he was really rich. That's right. Show me the money. 
I have so much money. <laughs> money, 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 money. And the reason Zacchaeus had so much money, he was a cheat. When he took money from people for taxes, he would also take a little or a lot for himself. Everyone knew about it, even this guy. Come on, come on, I haven't got all day. I got 30 other people to shake down. I mean, get taxes from. Fine, here. That's the best you can do. Come on, get it a little closer. Eh. All right. Eh. Ah, thank you. Uh -huh. What is this? Taxes? This isn't even half of what you owe me. Go get the rest of it and don't come back here till you have it. Uh, grumble, 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 grumble. So Zacchaeus wasn't exactly a good guy. Well, one day, Jesus came to Jericho. And Zacchaeus wanted to see him, but so did a lot of other people. Uh, ooh, there's Jesus. I can't see. Ah, why'd I have to be so short? Maybe if I jump. Huh. Uh. Huh. Ah. Huh. Ah. This isn't working. I gotta think of something else. Uh. That's when Zacchaeus came up with a plan. He would climb a nearby sycamore tree to get a better look at Jesus. Seems so much easier when squirrels do it. When Zacchaeus got up in the tree, he waited for Jesus to pass underneath. Oh, there's Jesus. You see him? He's... Zacchaeus, come down out of that tree. I want to stay at your house today. You know my name? And you want to stay at my house? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, excuse me. I am just so excited. Jesus wants to stay at my house. <laughs> Not sure if Zacchaeus did a backflip out of the tree, but he did come down at once and welcome Jesus gladly. When all the people saw this, they began to whisper among themselves that Jesus had gone to be the guest of a sinner. Zacchaeus heard them, and so he turned to them and said, Look, Lord, here and now, I give half of what I own to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone, I will pay them back four times the amount I took. Zacchaeus, I've got the money that you wanted. Oh, no, wait. Does that seem fair? Yep. Woohoo! Today, <laughs> salvation has come to your house. The end. Let's give our flannel graphers a big round of applause. <laughs> Zacchaeus wasn't a good guy at first. He was a cheater and he was greedy. But when he met Jesus, Jesus forgave him. That forgiveness gave Zacchaeus the confidence he needed to turn his life around. That's what forgiveness can do for me and you too. Sometimes we do things we know are wrong. We disobey our parents. We tell lies. Sometimes we're lazy. Sometimes we're selfish. These are called sins. The good news is that not long after Jesus met Zacchaeus, Jesus chose to pay the price for our sins and the sins of the whole world by dying on a cross. And when you really believe that, you'll know how Zacchaeus felt. You'll know what it feels like to be forgiven. What do you think about that? 
I think that's incredible, Kellen. It didn't matter to Jesus what kind of guy Zacchaeus was. He, he forgave him anyway. Just like he forgives you and me. Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the story, Kellen. Anytime. I'll see you guys later. I love that we're forgiven because I don't know about you, John, but I mess up a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like that time you goofed off and lost the Mega Movie Mania trivia contest. You forgave me for that. Th that's true. Yeah, and it feels, it, 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 it feels, you know what? Reveal the question. What does it feel like to be forgiven? I'd say you've forgiven me for, for being an overconfident, arrogant. Presumptuous. All the things. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a pretty incredible feeling. It, it makes me feel like I can let go of the mistakes I've made in the past so I can do what's right next time. That's awesome. What do you all think? What does it feel like to be forgiven? I know what I feel like right now. Peanut butter and onion smoothie? No. I feel like winning a Mega Movie Mania Trivia Contest. Oh, yeah, and let's do it. Good show, John. Thank you. It really was a humdinger. Told you. We'll <laughs> see you next time for a brand new show. Guess what we're finished with, the so-and-so show. That's right, we're all done with the so-and-so show. It's over, don't you know? I guess we better go. Hey, please check back for more. So and so show. Put yourself in Zacchaeus' shoes for a moment. You were hated by everyone around you. You have stolen their money. You have treated them unfairly. You are alone. You don't have any friends. And yet Jesus comes into town, looks up in a tree, calls him by name and says, Zacchaeus, I'm going to your house today. If you think about it, this is probably Zacchaeus' first visitor in his house. That's how much, that's how hated he was. We look at Zacchaeus and we can say he did a lot of bad things. How can he be forgiven? Did God really forgive Zacchaeus for all that he had done wrong? And the answer is yes, a resounding yes, a, an answer that we have confidence that God forgives us because the way I know this is because God has forgiven me of my sin. There are, so, there are a lot of you that are watching that you have placed your faith and trust in Jesus that you are a Jesus follower because you know that God has forgiven you of your sin. You see, sin is the thing that separates us from God. God being a perfect God that he is, worthy, holy, righteous, pure, is the exact opposite of sin. Sin are the things that we disobey who God is or the things that he wants us to do in our life. And when the moment that we have sinned, the moment that we have done something wrong, we are automatically separated. But God doesn't end the story there. He doesn't just say, okay, you've sinned, you're off, you're off on your own. Instead, he sent someone to bring us back into a relationship with God. He sent Jesus, his own son, so that way through Jesus and only Jesus, we can be brought back into a relationship with him. John 3, 16 is the, per, is the best Bible verse that explains this. It says, for God so loved the world, meaning you and me, that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, so that whoever believes in him or puts their faith and trust in him will not perish or be separated, but have eternal life. You see, we can have confidence knowing that we are forgiven because of Jesus, because of him dying on the cross for the consequence and the punishment for our sin. And that's why we can have confidence. We can have confidence knowing that we are forgiven, not just for one sin, but for every sin that we have done, not just for sins we've done in the past or the sins we're doing or that we'll do today, but also future sins as well. God's forgiveness, grace, and love covers every sin. And we don't have to worry if we are ever going to fall out of God's love because that doesn't happen. We don't have to worry that God loves us more on certain days um, or, uh, more than others. That doesn't happen. God loves you the same yesterday as he does right now as he will tomorrow. Now, for some of you, like I said, you have put your faith and trust in Jesus. 
you have made that decision to be a Jesus follower. I know there's a lot of you watching that have not made that decision. Today, right now, in this moment, could be that decision that you accept God's love in your life, that you accept that, that free gift of eternal life that Jesus paid on the cross for you, for your sin. That's available for you even over a TV screen or a computer screen, you can accept right now. Or if you're here tonight, you can talk with your small group leader. You can talk with me. You can talk with Mr. Elijah or Ms. Jasmine. What does it mean to follow Jesus? And we're here to help you in understanding what does it mean to follow him so that way you can have the confidence knowing that you are forgiven of your sin. And more importantly, the confidence that the God of the universe knows you and calls you to be in his family because of how much he loves you. So in the meantime, remember this one truth is that you can have confidence because you are forgiven. And that will hold you over until we see you later on tonight for Summerfest in person. Well, you know about our missions challenge. We've been talking about it for the past couple days. We have a goal of $2,000 that we want to raise to send to Vincent in Tanzania so that way he can use that to be able to provide books and school supplies and Bibles and clothes and shoes to kids in need. So we are well on our way and I'm so glad that you guys are participating and being a part of this missions challenge. And remember the grade that gives the most, we're gonna be able to slime all the other grade leaders on the last night of Summerfest as a way to celebrate what you guys have done. Well, I know we've been talking about Vincent and Tanzania, but we have a couple of different uh, families who have listened to God's call in their life and they have moved from the United States to different parts of the world to tell others about Jesus. And we have the Hughes family that we wanna introduce you guys to. They live in Vietnam and they put together an awesome video to show you guys what it's like to live in Vietnam, some of the food that they eat, but also talking about what God is doing in Vietnam and how their family is responding to God's call and what they're seeing God do around them. So let's check out this video. Okay. 
was for geography. Oh. My favorite school subject is history and Bible. And my favorite Vietnamese food is uh, gum sun, which is rice and pork chop. My favorite subjects in school are art and history. And my favorite Vietnamese food is pho bò, which is beef noodle soup. Ellie Jane, what is your favorite thing to do in school? Um, write in letters and numbers. And what is your favorite Vietnamese food? Um, fried squid. The one who makes a way in the wilderness. Who is the one who makes a stream in the desert? Back in September last year, I had an idea to help orphans. I created my own cafe and had my brother and sister and some friends help me make drinks and bake goods and sell them to raise money to buy 40 clothes outfits for the kids at the orphanage. After buying the clothes, we took them to the Christmas party at the orphanage in December. We handed them out to each kid by name to show we love of Jesus and to be his hands and feet. to go away in the whole world and that um, I'd be better at school and that my friends would get to know Jesus. Thanks for praying us. Thanks for praying for us too. Thanks for praying for us our kids. Have a great summer fest. Well that brings us to the end of our summer fest morning session but just like the previous two days, the fun always continues. Make sure you are here tonight for Summerfest in person as we continue with all the fun things, including our new small group competition. We are doing an amazing race competition. It is something that you don't want to miss and your grade is going to need you there to earn color points. Another way to earn color points for your team is with our next Spirit Day. It is Crazy Hair Day in Hope Kids, so make sure you come uh, dressed and prepared with the craziest hair possible to earn points for your color team. Remember, as always, we have our John 15, 12 memory verse um, challenge. If you say this memory verse to your small group leader, word for word, you'll be entered in to win the Press Play devotional, a book full of resources or activities for you guys to help grow in your confidence and relationship with God. So if you know your verse, make sure you guys tell that to your small group leader tonight. And then lastly, it's time for you guys to grab your at-home kit. Grab your craft packet and your group packet, turn to day three, and then you guys will look at the activities that you're doing. Look for the supplies that you need for your packet. Again, for the group side, you're gonna have to gather some stuff around your house to be able to use for the activity time. But for today, you guys are making some pudding and some sun catchers. So I'm excited to see how they're gonna turn out. I hope you guys have an awesome time the rest of your day and we'll see you guys later on for Summerfest in person.